So much is indicated in the scriptures about God our Father and light. It is shown to us in scripture that God dwells in unapproachable and inaccessible light. We know that light speed is a constant throughout the universe and that the closer we come to light speed, the less we age in time. It may indicate that by achieving or somehow passing light speed, we would stop aging altogether. Might it indicate that beyond the speed of light is a heavenly realm? And this is Butchie from California. Interesting. Little Star um, Wars is uh, in there, and, uh, you know, but uh, <laughs> might relate to a lot of our audience there. We're talking about jumping to light speed here, Father. Yeah. Well, you know, um, uh, to, to be honest with you, um, you know, when you uh, go faster than the speed of light, you know, uh, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, well, would a person then uh, actually go backward in time, mm -hmm. something of that nature. But actually, uh, I wrote a whole dissertation on this, and uh, the, the answer really is no. You actually go back in the measurement of time. Yes, the clock would go backwards. Uh, but you would not mm. be going back into, as it were, a past scene. Mm. So the, the first thing is we, we don't want to get the person to, get younger. Um, uh, would that person uh, get younger? Uh, or? Actually, uh, no, actually, it would just reverse all of the directions of, you know, the molecular flow okay. or the atomic flow or the atomic vibration in your body. Okay. Uh, but it, it really, you know, in, in terms of probably, uh, uh, I hate to say this, but kind of dissipate you okay. uh, rather than make <laughs> right. you younger. Okay. But uh, for all intents and purposes, though, uh, uh, you would already be, you know, if, you, if they accelerated you to light speed, uh, you, you'd be vaporized into pure energy. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, you, you wouldn't have to worry about getting beyond it because <laughs> there would be no you left. So, uh, good point. And uh, uh, good point. So, mm -hmm. But the, the main thing is, yeah, we don't want to confirm Confuse, you know, uh, you know, a reality that we know of in physics with something that is metaphysical or transphysical, uh, because of course, uh, you know, what happens in the transphysical domain is essentially not regulated by physical laws. So, I mean, once we pass over into this other domain, right? You know, remember what I was saying a few, you know, a few uh, uh, weeks back, you know, about the, the whole universe being a thought in the mind of God. Remember, I'm saying this analogically, right? I'm saying this as an analogy, but, you know, in, in the unrestricted act of thinking of God's consciousness, right, the universe is but one thought, right? And, of course, heaven is a whole other thought. A and, of course, you know, when you move from, as it were, one realm to another, one thought to another, uh, if I can use the analogy, mm -hmm. right, you're not, there's no necessary correlation or relationship, mm -hmm. uh, you know, between the laws of one thought and, and the other thought. Mm -hmm. So between one realm and another realm. So I, I would probably sort of lay off of the, uh, the parallelism between, mm -hmm. you know, physical laws and activity, uh, even, you know, getting to light speed or beyond light speed and, and applying it to a heavenly realm. I think God literally issues or ushers us in, in some way from the domain we are uh, we are at to another thought as it were another domain in his mind and I think we move into that heavenly realm and it, and it is distinct but it always is interesting you know to see sometimes mm -hmm. the, the the symbolism of light is so so pervasive I agree with you because of course light it has a purity to it it also in physics it, it, it is you know that from which everything else as it were is born you know the kind of the energy you know for, you know for, uh, uh, that that is kind of at the base of everything uh, in, in the universe at least visible matter in the universe and, and of course it, it is you know a, a symbolic representation in Christian scripture and judeo-christian scriptures uh, you know even of, of God's presence uh, you know it is kind of interesting in the shroud of Turin which is something we'll discuss at a, at a later point you know there's some rather interesting mm -hmm. evidence you you know that for a, a a brief moment right for one forty billionth of a second the, the the corpse which i believe is the corpse of jesus right mm -hmm. the dead body of jesus actually emanated for one forty billionth of a second enough 
ultraviolet, it is it's called vacuum ultraviolet radiation, a very, very mm. short-lived but intense kind of, of radiation. Um, ultraviolet radiation is a very intense kind of radiation, but vacuum ultraviolet radiation is a very short-lived radiation, but it emanated uh, that 1 40 billionth of a second, several billion watts of radiation. You know, this is the only way of producing the rapid dehydration that gave rise to that three-dimensional uh, photographic negative image on the Shroud of Turin. Mm -hmm. But the only way we've been able to produce it right now is with an, uh, you know, eczema ARF uh, laser in a laboratory, but it would take 14,000 of those lasers mm -hmm. to produce that image at a magnitude of several billion watts for one forty billionth of a second. Now you tell me how a dead, uh, you know, uh, uh, a body does that, you know, except maybe <laughs> when it's in a transitional state mm -hmm. to a transphysical state. Mm -hmm. And so there you might have that analogy work, right. right? I mean, I think, you know, there's a little relic of Jesus' resurrection right on the cloth itself. And of course, it is the light right. that does it. Uh, it's it's not uh, you know it can't okay. be done by heat obviously you just burn the cloth in one and a half seconds so you have very short-lived radiation but it's done by the well, light itself which causes this re rapid dehydration.